Thank you for joining me. I'm William Earnhardt. I'm the pastor of the Bushnell, Homosassa, and Inverness, Florida Seventh-day Adventist churches. And in our Sabbath school lesson this week, it addresses Mark chapter 7, where the Pharisees are asking Jesus, why don't you and your disciples do the ceremonial washing before you eat? And Jesus, it's very important we understand, in the context of this story, this passage, Jesus isn't talking about, and the Pharisees aren't talking about, clean or unclean meat as far as pork and things like that. They're addressing the ceremonial washing. So what is the issue here is their man-made rules, their man-made ceremonies for eating as opposed to what the law of Moses says. And Jesus, in this context, as other contexts, is defending the scriptures, defending the law of Moses. As a matter of fact, when they ask him why they're not doing the ceremonial, the, the man-made ritual or traditions of washing their hands before they eat, uh, Jesus says here in verse 6 and 7 of uh, Mark chapter 7, I'm reading the NLT, You hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. And the same stories in Matthew 15. And in verse uh, 3 of Matthew 15, Jesus answers the same question, saying, And why do you, by your traditions, violate the commandments of God? And then in verse 19, he says, Their worship is a farce, for they teach man made ideas as commandments of God. So, Jesus here is defending the Old Testament against the man-made traditions of the day. And so Jesus goes on and he explains how it's not what goes into a man that makes him clean or unclean, but the things that come out of our hearts are what make us clean or unclean. And then in Mark 7, verse 19, Jesus says, food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. And then in parentheses, which are not the words of Jesus, but in parentheses, it says, by saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. Now in the King James Version, it just simply says, purging all meats. All right, so that word meat in the King James Version of Mark 7, 19, and in the original manuscripts is the word bromata, B-R-O-M-A-T-A. And it simply means food. It does not mean flesh. It simply means food. I guess it could include flesh, but it's not talking about flesh. So again, the issue here isn't unclean or clean meats. The issue is whether we follow God's laws only, or we have to incorporate this man-made law, man-made tradition of doing the ceremonial washing of your hands before the food is acceptable to eat. And so what is clear here, and in, in the NLT, they, they've got it exactly right declaring all food clean, not all meats clean, not all flesh meat clean. And, and so again, the, the issue is whether you had to wash your hands or not for the food to be clean and acceptable. And Jesus is saying, no, you don't have to follow that ritual. And, and so when it says all food is clean, of course, it's just meaning all food that is biblically meant to be food is clean. You know, you have to look at these things within reason and realize the context of the thinking of both Jesus and the Pharisees in this context, and neither one of them was considering pork to be food. 
you know, it, you have to keep things in context. You know, it, it's just like you're on a vacation with your kids. You wake up one morning and the kids say, what can we do? And you say, well, we can do anything you like. Well, that doesn't mean you can go rob a bank. <laughs> keep it in context, right? And, and so that's what we have to do here is keep it in context. All right, the issue is not unclean uh, flesh. The context is, is the food clean only if you do the ceremonial washing? And Jesus is saying the ceremonial washing is not an issue as to whether the food can be eaten or not. As a matter of fact, in Matthew, going back to Matthew 15, verse 20, it makes it even more clear what the context is. I'll start here with verse 19. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. Verse 20, Matthew 15, 20. These are what defile you. Eating with what, I'm sorry, eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. So, so again, Jesus is making it clear there, uh, even more clear than maybe it was in Mark 7, 19 that the issue is clearly washing, doing the ceremonial washing, whether that was important or not. And Jesus is saying in, in the context here, of both Matthew 15 and Mark 7, I think it's a little more clear here in Matthew 15, 20, where he says, these are what defile you, eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. So again, there, there's nothing in this context of Mark 7 or Mark, uh, fit, I'm sorry, Mark 7 or Matthew 15 as to whether or not pork is unclean or not. That simply is not even uh, being considered in, in, the, in these passages. And not only that, but if, if I were to think that Jesus declared pork clean in this passage, then I would have to wonder why later in Acts chapter 10, Peter is telling Jesus or, or telling God in the vision, the Lord, that he has never eaten anything unclean. You know, if, if it wasn't an issue here in Matthew 15 or Mark 7, why would it still be an issue in Acts chapter 10? But even in Acts chapter 10, Peter tells us the context of the vision and the meaning of the vision. In Acts chapter 10, verse 28, Peter tells us that the vision told me, I learned from the vision that I should call no man unclean. So again, pork is not even the context in Acts 10 as well as in uh, Mark 7 and Matthew 15. And when we read other places in the uh, New Testament, uh, in 1 Corinthians 8, Paul talks about not worrying about what you eat and things like that. Well, again, the context is set for us in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1. Paul says, now concerning things sacrificed to idols. So again, the, the issue, <coughs> sorry, the, the issue in Paul's day, again, wasn't pork, whether you could eat it or not. That, that was not an issue. They, they knew that they weren't to be eating that. The issue was food sacrificed to idols. So and the thing is, Pork is very unhealthy for us. It doesn't matter if we're a Jew. It doesn't matter if we're living after the cross. Our stomachs are still the same. Uh, pork is very unhealthy for us. And you can find out about that outside of the Bible. I was watching a, uh, a video documentary in a doctor's waiting room a while back. And uh, it was talking about how pork triples our chances of diabetes, uh, triples 
our cholesterol. Uh, it's, it's just not good. And whether we're before the cross, after the cross, whether we're Jews or not, it's just not healthy. And having said that, as we look at what we eat in light of the cross, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Paul tells us, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And I got to admit, that includes a lot more than just whether we eat pork or not. That includes a lot of things. That includes how much we eat, when we eat, and other things that we eat. Uh, so, so that's something I've got to uh, hold myself accountable for as well, uh, because there are things we all struggle with. And, and so as, as iron sharpens iron, and as, as we all encourage each other and hold each other accountable, let's follow that principle of eating and drinking to the glory of God. And again, that includes way more than just the, uh, the pork issue. And so there is plenty of room for all of us to grow, or at least I can speak for myself. There's plenty of room for me to grow. And so I just wanna leave us with that thought. I hope uh, that this has answered maybe some questions you might have had about, uh, where it says that uh, Jesus declared all foods clean there in Mark 7, 19. I hope that uh, this helps us to understand the context. Uh, but again, there's that greater principle, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, to eat and drink whatever we eat or drink to the glory of God. Again, we wanna live our lives in the light of the cross and the light of God's love and offer our bodies a living sacrifice as Christ sacrificed himself. We wanna give our bodies to be strong and healthy so we can help spread the gospel so people can be ready for Jesus's soon coming. God bless you.